start wiping glasses all the dang time. This evening is going to be slightly space themed. How will you be able to tell? I will make occasional space references. But you know, bartenders, we dress the same across the galaxies. It's uh, something I've noticed and something I'm going to capitalize on. Let's see. Looks like we're going through all right. So welcome to my bar, adventurous drinkers. I'm Ansel, the indecisionist, and I'll be your dungeon barkeep today. Now, just like most fen fr uh, mo ugh, sorry, just like most folks tending the bar this side of the Kuiper Belt, I'm no expert mis mixologist, but I am adventurous enough to try whatever I manage to make, and I'll tell you just how it is. Now, I asked my friends on Facebook for the names of drinks that I could make you, and they came up with loads of ideas. So many, in fact, that I couldn't decide. So, I've made a big list, and I'm going to use a standard set of gaming dice to tell me what I'm going to make you and what's going to be in it. So, we'll start off with a name, and that requires a D100. That's, uh, that's these ten-sided dice. And for those of you who have been enjoying us before, you may enjoy that I have now added a B camera. Ah, so now you can see down here in the tray the dice that I'm rolling. All right, so we're going to start with that D percentile. All right, that's an 80. So number 80 is... The Manticore Mule, suggested by Rudy Schultz. Today, I'm mixing you a Manticore Mule. Now, you may be familiar with other mules, and let me tell you, this one's going to be probably nothing like any of them. It's because our next thing is to pick the main liquor that's gonna go into this drink, and that's gonna start with our D20. We got a five, five, is black pineapple rum, according to the liquors chart, which I didn't transition to, so there you are. Five is black pineapple rum. Exciting, all right. It's like Malibu, but it's trying to be fancy. So here we go. Next up, we have our D12, which is gonna be bar terms. Let's see what our bar term of the day is gonna be. One, roll the nat one on that. So that means there's gonna be a chaser uh, chaser is anytime you follow a drink with another drink. Uh, usually your chaser is going to be like a beer or something lighter or something to cleanse the palate afterward. Let's see what the chaser for this one's going to be. We'll see how what makes sense uh, when we get to the end of making our cocktail. But yeah, so that's what a chaser is. Most people know that one already, but if you didn't, now you do. Next, we're going to get up to our uh, D8. That's our mixer. Another natural one. For dry vermouth. Vermouth and rum. That's not a thing you see very often. Let's see if there's a reason for that. We're going to keep on moving to a D6. Uh, D6 right here. I know, D100. Our D6 is, uh, is going to determine the garnish that goes on this. So here's our garnish. Garnish is going to be a 5. That's our bitter cube bitters again. Weird, that was the same thing we got last time. So we're gonna grab the bitter cube ones. Here we go, from Bolivar. I don't do names very often on this program, but the Bolivar bitters, I think, are really special. So in case you're looking for those specific ones, those are the ones to look for. And finally, we've got a D4 to decide the method for mixture. So let's see what we've got on the D4. That is a two. So we're gonna stir this drink. That's exciting. Uh, I have exactly the wrong, dr gl uh, wrong glass for a stirred drink. So here we go. We're going to start once again with black pineapple rum. Uh, that black pineapple rum is, uh, is gonna go, since we're stirring, straight into our coupe. I will measure it despite my inclination not to. So, here we go. You can see how by calling it black, they made it almost the color of spice drum. So there we go. 
There is our black pineapple rum. We're gonna follow that up with that dry vermouth. Why dry vermouth? Because I don't like sweet vermouth very much. If I were me, where would I have set my vermouth? It was right here. Oh God, the worst kind of technical issue. I can't find the drink. All right, to keep things moving, I'm gonna roll twice as a penalty to myself. So uh, that was mixers, so a D8. We're gonna roll a three and a two. So we're gonna add lemon drop martini mix and grenadine. Good news, it got grosser. All right, so grenadine and lemon drop martini mix are gonna finish out this drink. This is brand new lemon drop martini mix, so you know it's gotta be good. Let's use my bar knife. You know what makes a bar knife different? Nothing. You know, you're right, Shelby. It is in the fridge. That's exactly where vermouth goes, and I don't know why I forgot to grab it out. Thank you, Shelby. I'm, I've chosen my, my penalty though, so here it is. Lemon drop martini mix with rum. And then I'm gonna do a half of the grenadine because I want this to actually be a palatable uh, beverage at the end of it, so. I'm just gonna try and give it all the benefits it can have. It's interesting to note that all the beverages I've made so far on this program have ended up being red. Why is that? No idea. So finally, we're gonna finish this off with Bitter Cube Bitters. Just a few drops. That ought to take some of the sweetness off. go and finally we're gonna stir because that's what fate said now based upon the looks of this I'm gonna say this is the sort of adventure or a sort of drink that you would uh, have right before you go out on a space adventure with a, uh, a pirate of dubious reputation, the sort of adventure that you have a feeling is going to lead to lots of crime and not so much, uh, you know, saving princesses and whatnot. So here we are. This is the uh, Minotaur Mule. That's actually really good. I'm not gonna lie to you, this is delicious. It's sweeter than I generally go for, and I'll say that right out front. But aside from being very, very sweet, it is delicious. It's got a beautiful citrus note from the lemon. The pomegranate from the grenadine really comes through. Um, the pineapple rum sort of informs it all and it turns it into sort of a, a, a Mai Tai sort of thing. It's got this, this beautiful tropical thing going on, which you wouldn't suspect from something so violently red. And uh, maybe, maybe serving it in the, in the coop is what, uh, what informed that predisposition. But here we are, this is our mule. So now we have to decide on a chaser. Nothing in there made sense as a chaser. So I'm just gonna roll another random shot and that's gonna be our chaser. That's a four. Oh, I haven't been cutting back to the B camera. You have to take my word for it. Here we go. There's our four. Uh, so, four is pineapple rum. So as though we haven't gotten enough pineapple rum in our lives, we're gonna chase this drink with a shot of pineapple rum. Why? Because this is a pleasure planet. We're trying to be tropical. There's probably mostly water on this planet, despite the fact that that's not how ecology works at all. But these tiny islands that the native uh, alien species live on 
are just so tropical, and Earthlings cannot get enough of how much it looks like Fiji, but definitely isn't. Just like Malibu rum. Wow. Wow. I'm remembering now that Malibu is supposed to be coconut, not pineapple. All right. So, far preferable to a shot of just that coconut rum, the Minotaur Mule. Try it at home, if you dare. Now, thank you so much for adventuring to my bar today. If you're a fan of RPGs like I am, please take a look at my online gaming event uh, that I'm hosting soon. It's called TTRPG Pickup uh, Con, and it's at TTRPGPickupCon.com. Please also take a look at Other World Theater. They're hosting their annual gala and it has an amazing cast of stars set up, including Harvey Guillem uh, from uh, What We Do in the Shadows, and the guy who voiced The Witcher in the video games. It's a pretty amazing lineup of talent that they've got uh, visiting them for this one. Uh, now, if I am new on YouTube, uh, and so for those of you who are just joining us, please do subscribe, like, hit the bell, leave a comment, all the things that YouTubers tell you to do. Uh, there's a reason for it. It really, really helps, especially for new, new channels like this one to get us noticed. And uh, if I get to 100, 100 subscribers, I can change my URL, which will make me so much easier to find. So that's a big incentive for me um, beyond all the other incentives that are further down the line. So thank you all so much once again for visiting me here at the bar. I have been Ansel the Indecisionist, your dungeon bartender, and I'll see you next week.